Welcome to part two of this video on accessories for the Contax film camera system. This part covers remote triggers, winders, data backs and flash cables. The Contax SLR system supported remote controllers. This is an infrared remote controller S shown on an RTS2. There is a remote control which is used to trigger it, like so. The remote controller S has a cable release connector which connects to the back of the camera and is used to trigger the camera. This is an earlier model of infrared controller designed for the original RTS which used the earlier type of cable release connector. The infrared controller set S supported multiple command channels and you could control two different cameras using one remote with two different receivers by using different channels for each camera. It supports both single and continuous shooting. There was also a radio remote controller with similar functionality. The original Contax RTS series and some other earlier models did not have built-in winders and separate winders were sold for these cameras. This is the winder for the original RTS which supports single and continuous shooting. There are a few novel features to these. One of these is an optional accessory shown here, the interval timer. The interval timer was used to take frames on a regular basis doing time-lapse photography. This is powered off the winder and you just switch it on. Obviously that is set at a two second interval and is taking a frame every two seconds. You can adjust it to a four second interval. The interval adjusts to 4 seconds. It goes all the way up to an interval of 2 minutes. This is an optional extra for the original real-time winder designed for the RTS. Typically contacts would make a new winder when they brought out a new camera model. This is the winder W3 for the RTS2. This is a fairly standard winder that doesn't do anything fancy, although it does add two extra shutter releases and had optional accessories such as a power pack. The older winders for the RTS also worked on the RTS2. The second winder produced for the RTS, RTS2 was this, the professional motor drive. This is a rather more formidable piece of kit that takes 12 AA batteries and supports rather more features, which I will show you on the back. One of the additional features of the early RTS series was that you could get a bulk film back that held 250 frames, and with a winder like the PMD you could shoot the RTS like a DSLR back in the 1970s. This is the rear of the PMD. The down the centre of the winder is the master on off high low speed and interval timer selector. So this winder has the interval timer functionality built in. Along with speed selections it also has a frame counter and a couple of extra shutter releases and a connection for cable release or remote release. One unusual feature of these winders is that you could power the camera from the winder. This grey circular connector on the top of the winder is a power output and you could get a power adapter that's screwed into the battery compartment of the camera. This is one of them. This would effectively sit on there and screw into the battery compartment of the camera would enable you to use the winder's batteries to power the camera. There were different adapters for different camera bodies. With the arrival of the Contax 137MD a motor drive was built into some of the Contax SLRs. Most later contacts had a built-in motor drive. I believe the 159 and the S2 and S2B did not have a built-in motor drive, but the rest did. The early contacts also supported a range of data backs, which could print the date or time and other data. This would be done on the early ones on the image area of your picture. This is an early data back. This is for the 137MD. There were data packs for the RTS, RTS2 and other early contacts. Some contacts models had a data back built in, shown here with the RTS3, ST and RX. These can all print either the date or time between the frames. Not all contacts had data backs built in. Here we have a Contax 167 fitted with its optional data back. As you can see with this data back, the interval timer functionality has returned. 
and it became incorporated into the data back functionality. But only in the optional data backs are not the built in data backs. The data pack functionality increased in the later data backs. It went from printing on the image area of the film to printing between the frames and having the interval timer incorporated. And on the late ones, you also had a secondary mode that would print on the first two frames of the film and also optionally between the frames. And also the amount of data it would print increased to incorporate frame numbers, etc. The functionality available varies from data back to data back. This is the data back for the M1. It supports multiple different modes of imprinting data. It can do data summarised on the first two frames of the film and data printed between the frames. And it has an interval timer which can have a start time and number of shots to be taken. This is an example of later data backs. The N series did not have a built in data back. It was an optional extra. This was true for some contacts but not for all. The AX Nari did not have a, a built in data back. The 645 was slightly odd in that it had a built in data back that you could not turn off, which printed all of your lens data and aperture and shutter speed on the non image area at the edge of the frame. There was quite a sophisticated functionality on the late optional data backs with less sophisticated functionality on the built in data backs. Data backs were also supplied for non SLR contacts. This is the Contax T2 data back. This just prints the date or time on the image area of your picture and is not as sophisticated as the SLR data backs. Contax supported a range of flash cables for use with TLA flash system. So apart from mounting direct to the hot shoe, there was a cable which connected to the hot shoe and also had a hot shoe socket for TTL connectivity to an off camera flash as shown here. Amongst the other cables are ones that facilitated the use of the multi-connector S shown here. This is a connector with four custom sockets. A cable from the hot shoe was connected to one of these connectors and the other three were available for connecting to flashes. Here we have a TLA20 connected via the hot shoe at the bottom of the flash using two cables from the multi-connector S and also a TLA30 connected via a cable connected to the custom flash socket on the TLA30. These custom flash sockets were fitted to most contacts flash guns except the TLA20 and the G-series flashes. Using this system you could fire multiple flashes in TTL from the camera, like so. That covers the flash cables. Thank you for watching this video on accessories for the contacts camera system.